So we were setting up this morning to do a whole bunch of chocolate chip cookie recipes. Variations on a base recipe to show you how to do a cakey cookie, a crispy cookie, a chewy cookie, different flavoring options. And then it occurred to me, we should show you how we came up with the base recipe, the very first recipe, all of the steps that you go through to make a cookie recipe. So I'm calling this anatomy of a chocolate chip cookie. So you want to make a chocolate chip cookie. You're going to go to a cookbook or you're going to go to the internet and you're going to find a recipe and you're going to make it. Great. But all baking is based on formulas, and the formulas were figured out a very long time ago. And all recipes, all baking recipes, fall within a general guideline of these formulas. So a cookie, a chocolate chip cookie, is a drop cookie. And the base formula for a chocolate chip cookie is one part flour, one part sugar, one part fat whole lot of variation within those three ingredients, but we're going to start off with all-purpose flour, white sugar, and butter. And that one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio is based solely on weight. So just to make it easy, I'm going to do everything in grams, and I'm going to do 100 grams of each. It's going to make the math easier as we move forward, and um, it's going to make less cookies. I don't need a whole lot of cookies. And once you know the formula, you can scale it up or scale it down to whatever you want. So. Starting off, I need about 100 grams of butter. And there you go, 100 grams of butter, 100 grams of white granulated sugar. There you go. So I'm just gonna set that aside and I will weigh out the flour. Pretty standard cookie, cream the butter and sugar. Flour, a little bit at a time. So that is the basis of a drop cookie. At this point, there's no flavoring, there's no leavening, and there are no eggs. But this is the foundation of where we're going to take our cookie. So I'm going to bake this off and then we'll see where to go next. So, first batch, and you can see kind of what we're working with here. Quite dark brown and lacy around the outside. I mean, these are both just a starting point. Uh, interesting flavor and texture. I think we're off to a good start. But I think the next iteration is going to be one to one to one, one part butter, one part brown sugar, one part flour. Let's get those mixed up and in the oven. So this set is quite a bit darker. Uh, they didn't spread nearly as much. So you can see these ones were put in the oven directly after mixing. These ones went into the freezer for 15 minutes and then into the oven. Not as much spreading, darker color, um, much more like a cookie color that we would want. And the texture, the white ones were chewy. The brown sugar ones are crunchier. Um, a lot better flavor. So on to the next variation. Same proportions, except we're gonna do half white sugar and half brown sugar. So this set is exactly what I would expect from half white sugar, half brown sugar. Uh, the color is about the same as you would expect from a chocolate chip cookie. The texture is pretty good. The flavor is incredible. Too buttery at this point, but that flavor will round out as we add the rest of the ingredients that you think of in a chocolate chip cookie. And those are eggs, vanilla, salt, and baking soda. 
or baking powder. And so the next version of the cookies will include these ingredients. And the formula or the average formula for these is pretty well set up. Uh, baker's formulas are flour represents whatever the weight of the flour is represents 100% of chicken. I'm working. One hundred percent of the recipe. So, flour is one hundred percent, sugar one hundred percent, fat one hundred percent, all the same weight. Eggs represent about twenty-five percent of the weight of the flour. Uh, vanilla is about five percent of the weight of the flour. Salt is about four percent of the weight of the flour, and baking soda is about one point five percent of the weight of the flour. And then, of course, the chocolate chips can be up to about seventy-five percent of the weight of the flour. So let's mix up the next set of cookies and see how those turn out. All right, so here we have the starting point for our exploration of the chocolate chip cookie. This is a formula cookie um, and it needs tweaking. But now we know what the basics are, we know what each thing does and how it works and we just slowly start to change the percentages to get what we're looking for. And this is exactly what I thought would happen with the addition of the baking soda. Baking soda lowers the pH, um, which causes a whole range of other things to happen. It will tenderize the cookie, which I don't know yet because I haven't tasted one. Oh, they're chewy. Crispy and chewy. With a lower pH, it speeds the Maillard reaction, which causes some really nice crispy browning. Um, keeps it tender. And it also stops gluten formation, which has allowed them to spread, really spread. If you are looking for a flat, chewy, crispy cookie, this is perfect for you. If you're looking for a cakey cookie, not quite what you're looking for. And if you're looking for something in between, again, not what you're looking for. So using this as our starting point, I'm gonna take the formula and we're gonna play with how much fat is in it, how much butter. Um, we're going to play with how much overall sugar is in it and then the composition of white sugar to brown sugar because that changes it. And we're going to do probably five or six different cookie recipes and then we're going to sit down, we're going to taste them all. And we're going to give you the formula so you can make this at home and you can, you can play with it yourself. Um, once you know those numbers, anything's possible. So, if you don't want to know any of that, um, the recipes will be in the show notes. So come on back and see all of the cookie variations.